My name is Jeremy Weller. I run a company called The Grass Market Projects and we make theatre and film based on people's lived experience. And that lived experience, we then work with them as kind of collaborators to transform into performance, into film. The people that we're working with usually have never acted before. And what we're doing, my team and myself, are actually encouraging, teasing, nurturing, getting them to express their story. Currently, I'm an artist in residence with uh, the NHS, exploring the hard to reach community and various communities' experiences of accessing the National Health Service. I came up with the title Where It Hurts because it struck me that the people that go to the hospital are hurt in some way and they're going to the hospital to try and find out where they're hurt and to try and get help for where they're hurt. Where you put me? Why you put me in this room again? What is this fucking room? Bipolar, schizophrenic, personality disorder. Go on then, what is it? Which one? Which one is it? He was a good looking guy. She was a good looking lassie that had everything that looked like that. He was never making a recovery. He'd never knew who that bairn was. What is that? Will you answer me? What you fucking looking at? Answer me then! What the fuck is that? Fucking get through here! What is that? And he dragged me through to the bathroom and he spoke me in front of the mirror. Look! It generally brought it up catharsis. And catharsis, of course, goes back to uh, Greek theatre. And Greek theatre was highly conventionalised, highly ritualised, and yet it produced some of the most moving and powerful works. But what really shone through for me in, in hearing these stories was the sense of uh, attachment to the NHS as an institution, for all its many flaws. I was that size! There was nothing I could do! But I ran through that table, and I held on at the back each time, so I don't know, Not a mock line. It's the generosity in the room from people who participated in this and shared their stories that openly and honestly is <coughs> incredibly powerful to be able to put over you to work this afternoon, but it really has been very, very moving. Just felt so well cared for as an audience member because one moment I was being Absolutely, like, like your piece, I'm absolutely, even though I was at the back, I mean, I always liked being at the front, uh, but I was absolutely having that hurdle, that, that, that question, can you help me? And then you moved on with a completely different rhythm and saying, well, yeah, that's my, okay, maybe you've been traumatised by that, but I feel that every day. And so just those caring rhythms of between the former and audience lead me back to what Neil said about, we can probably sort this out. I know this, there was just a lot of really carefully crafted and both both crafted and instinctive caring. All these people are arriving at the doors of the NHS with multitude of issues and pain and hurt to do with domestic violence, childhood neglect, poverty. The community doesn't divide between the hard to reach community, the the middle class community, the upper class community and the NHS community, they're one and the same. All walks of life are represented in the staff of the NHS. So in that sense I, I came to the conclusion the NHS isn't actually, doesn't even exist, it's just people trying to help other people. And there are various stories and reasons why people choose to work in the NHS. Well, I get me out of the picture by getting me back into the picture. And getting back into the picture is getting back into my shoes, into my skin, and I actually do care. See, I never stopped caring. I'd heard about burnout. See, when I first started in hospitals, I'd heard about it. I can mind asking a nurse and say, what's wrong with her? And another nurse saying, she's just burnt out. And I was like, what's that? Burnt out? I'll never be burnt out. 
I'll never compromise myself. I'll never compromise my caring standards towards people. Because I like words, and the, the word cure comes from the Latin cura. And if you look at, Google it, consult the God Google, and you will find that cura means care. It does not split cure and care. I wasn't paid to care. I was paid to be medical nurse, surgical nurse, oncology nurse, whatever it was, pain psychiatry. I was paid to administer care. That's a very, very different thing. So I've seen happened. hundreds and hundreds of people's lives destroyed by being forced to take medication that they don't need. And I've seen thousands of people's lives get better. And that's as it should be. It's so much easier to write a prescription than to not write a prescription. Because if you don't write a prescription, you've got to do something else. Okay. But maybe <coughs> that something else should be a little bit more listening to a story or helping frame a story or helping draw a story out. The problem with that, of course, is that it takes longer than 10 minutes. Psychiatrist! I'm sad for any psychiatrist! Stand there with their fancy suits and their fancy pens and they're writing in their fancy fucking books. What the fuck are you writing? What are you writing? Tell me what you're writing. You've been writing for fucking weeks. Weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months and months and months and months and still fucking no answer. No answer. Eventually, medication. He needs medication. The NHS might not be the right tool to deal with this mm -hmm. because as long as we're living in right, what we're doing right now, which is a right wing ideology that we're living through, people are concentrating on materialism rather than inclusiveness. You know, I'm lucky to know some of these guys, and we, I feel, are an exception to the rule right now. You know, we are about love, compassion, and empathy, but that's not the worlds that we live in, and that's certainly not the treatment that we've had for the NHS consistently. I'm an addict, I want to kill the pain. I'm at the pharmacy, I'm swallowing them now. And he says to me, can you fill this for me? Can you fill this out? What's your postcode? My postcode? My postcode? I don't know what fucking plan I'm on, never mind my postcode. There's your fucking pen! But we've got to accept that sometimes People get angry in the street and they shout at somebody, or sometimes they get so angry they assault somebody, that's going to happen. That's real life. But we shouldn't be locking up 20 or 30 people on a ward all day, every day, having to ask the permission to get out of the door just because one thing might happen one day. Exceptional events shouldn't be running people's lives like that. And yet that level of control has become accepted as normal. It isn't normal, it's completely abnormal. We're sick in the schemes. We're absolutely <coughs> sick. And I, not just the, 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 uh, the unhealthiness or the, the well-being. The, the, everything, the way it's set up, is set up to have this instability that there'll be a cure for. That there's a big dictionary, MSN, psychology that goes along with it. Why do middle class people not suffer all this stuff? They do. They're human elements. But they're, they're treated differently. The way we're treated in the schemes and stuff like that work on a daily basis with this type of clientele. And what happens, again, at 14, 15, we have early years intervention projects, every second year so people can get funding. And what does that mean? Pullman is filling people like me. You know, Berlini, Stockton, is filling people like this. We come in, we murder people. Why are they murdering people? Why are they slitting themselves? Why do they not love each other? Because we're not showing love, we're not showing compassion, we're not showing empathy. And that's not just for the schemes, that's for the institutions that are set up to say we care. No, you don't. Uh, one of the things I really admire about Jeremy uh, is in fact that he came from a similar background to you, but he was prepared not to accept that idea, that uh, he, was he was prepared to invade and to um, re reclaim art for his, himself and the experiences that he had. That life on the stage is the only thing that interests me because what they're actually doing is through trusting them in this frame they're actually communicating to people out there and that in itself is therapeutic but every person i met the stories that they told me and the things they went through and the strengths that they all had and i think that to me again it's like the focus of like the having and the have not and it's like that doesn't it, it make, we make it matter, but the real, the real thing is, what is 
It's not about what you don't have or what you do have. It's about who you are. I'm not just a drug addict. And I'm not just a nuisance. And I've not got psychosis. I'm fucking traumatized and I'm asking for your help. Can you help? Can you? Can you? Can you? Can you? Can you help me? Can you help me? Can any of you help me? And why is it that as soon as someone is getting annoyed about something and starts shouting or gets angry with somebody, the police are called? Why? Why don't you deal with it yourself? Why don't you say to the person, what's wrong? How? What? what are you getting annoyed about? What is it? Tell me. That is what's necessary here, rather than medication. Some people definitely need medication. Some people get it when they should get something else. Some people don't get enough of it. But for, for doctors, nurses, psychologists and others, social workers, to be prepared and allowed to take the time to hear and draw out stories may be the most important thing that they can do that day. To me, it's become a lesson in how sharing your story can be part of your healing. Sharing your story can be part of how you get better because you realize you're no longer isolated. Where it hurts is really the story of a group of people who are feeling hurt meeting another group of people who have the label of NHS workers who try to help them with getting rid of that hurt. But in a sense, they also slightly take on part of that hurt.